Welcome to the channel. My name is Matias. Today, we're going to talk about the Korean axe murder incident. It's a fascinating story. It's very bizarre. I'm a real sucker for these really weird and obscure moments in history that seem to have been forgotten over the years. I came across this story in James Clapper's book, Fact and Fears, which is a fascinating biography of his life. I'll put somewhere here on the screen because James Clapper was pretty important for U.S. foreign policy during the Obama administration. But he has a very, very long history with U.S. intelligence. So he retells this whole incident that took place way back in 1976. That when I first read it, I didn't think it was bullshit, but I thought that Clapper maybe might have exaggerated a little bit. So I went and double checked. And yes, everything that went down relative to this particular incident is completely bonkers. So we're going to get into this story. So as I mentioned previously, this takes place way back in 1976, specifically 18th of August. Specifically, this happens on the border between North and South Korea in a place called the JSA, which is in the DMZ, the Demilitarized Zone. Also, I forgot to mention JSA actually means Joint Security Area. So the thing is that we're dealing with North and South Korea. When you read into James Clapper's book and many other books about the whole situation between these two countries, the tension between these two nations, you can cut it with a knife and everything's on a hair trigger. There are many writers that are going to mention that one little mistake on this border can lead to all-out war. In another moment in Clapper's book, he actually mentions that he was stationed in South Korea during a time that he had gone on a helicopter flight to do reconnaissance on the border. By accident, the pilot sort of strayed into North Korea, but by only a couple meters, and that his helicopter started to be shot at, not only from the North Korean side, but also from South Korea. So let's get back to this incident. So... The writer starts talking about that in this area, the JSA, there's a particular tree that they have to prune that is blocking the line of sight between a observation post and a checkpoint. And for some reason on the Wikipedia post, every time they mention the tree, they mentioned that it was a popular tree. I'm not sure why it was popular. There's actually even a drawing of a map of the JSA and where this tree was, and they actually put popular tree there. So the decision's made. They're going to send in five Korean service corps to prune this tree. Also, the United Nations Command sends in a security force to accompany these men. Part of the security team, we're going to have Captain Arthur Bonifas. For South Korea, we're going to have Captain Kim. Also, First Lieutenant Mark Barrett is going to be there. Too. So we're going to have five South Koreans pruning this tree. We're going to have a security team of 11 people. It's not mentioned if Bonifas and Kim are counted within those 11. It is also mentioned that no one has taken their weapons with them. Only the guys putting the trees are using axes. So they're well into their work. They're 50 minutes in. When out of nowhere, they're rushed by 15 North Korean soldiers under the command of Lieutenant Pak Chul. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but his nickname was Lieutenant Bulldog. And at first, they did nothing. They just sort of stood there and watched. When randomly and out of nowhere, Pak Chul orders Bonifas that they cease the pruning of the tree. Bonifas actually ignores them, tells his men to keep on pruning the tree. And it's mentioned that Bonifas never even looks at Mr. Chul. He always has his back to him. So the North Korean lieutenant does not take this too kindly. He calls in 20 more men. These guys arrive with clubs and crowbars. They're ready for a nice little tussle. Pak Chul orders Bonifas again that they cease pruning the tree. Bonifas ignores him again. So Pak Chul gives the order to attack and he literally says, kill the bastards. So the KPA, the Korean People's Army, launch an attack over the pruning of a tree. Things get ugly very quickly, especially Captain Bonifas gets bludgeoned to death by five North Korean soldiers. Lieutenant Mark Barrett who was also present that I mentioned earlier, he actually fell into this depression on the side of the road and a North Korean soldier followed him and axed him to death. Actually, I'm wrong. He wasn't axed to death. Another soldier goes in after the first one, tries to finish him off. He still survives. He actually died later on in a hospital. So we get this very gruesome battle. Again, this is the space between North and South Korea. Tensions are very, very high. A war can start at any moment. The Ford administration in the U.S. totally freaks out over everything that went down. 
The North Korean officials also totally lose it. The propaganda machine within the country goes into full swing. So in this full-on crisis mode, Operation Paul Bunyan is born. They're going to prune that tree. They're still going to try to prune it. So on the 21st of August, we have 23 vehicles from the United States and South Korea entering the JSA without any warning. They do not give a heads up to North Korean officials. All these vehicles packed with security forces. Also, in two of them, we had two eight-man teams with chainsaws. They're going to prune the trees. The tree pruners are going to be accompanied by two platoons of 30 men who are going to secure the whole area. On top of this, we're going to have an extra 64 men Specially trained. I love that they add the fact that they know Taekwondo. They really know how to fight. They do not have firearms on them, but they're equipped with clubs and batons. They also secure the area with explosives, sandbags, mines. So the North Korean troops are not going to be able to rush them and catch them off guard. Also involved with this operation, we have 20 utility helicopters, 7 attack helicopters. In the wiki article, it says that they're all circling above. I don't think so. That's a very small... Pats of airspace to have so many flight vehicles maneuvering around. Because also we have involved a B-52. We have a couple of F-4 Phantoms. Also the South Korean Air Force throws in a couple of fighters too. So that's a lot of stuff lying around. You also had a aircraft carrier stationed right off on the coast. The USS. An additional 12,000 troops were brought in to South Korea just in case including 1,800 Marines from Okinawa. So I wonder who paid for this because this sounds crazy expensive. This insane flex over a tree. Yes, I know the two Americans that were killed. That's a tragedy. So in total, on site, we have about 813 men just for one tree. So they start the operation. They start pruning the tree. North Korea sends in immediately 150 to 200 men. These guys come in with machine guns and assault rifles, but I can just only imagine this whole situation. The poor North Korean soldiers just seeing this display of force and thinking to themselves, oh shit, <laughs> it must have been very bizarre. But mission accomplished, the tree was pruned. They actually sort of went overboard and basically just left a trunk with a couple of branches out and that's it. But basically this tree almost started World War III and that is very scary. The lengths that the U.S. and even the United Nations, they were in on this whole operation. South Korea, too. Were willing to go to do this insane flex on North Korea. And then you have the North Korean side, which pretty much is under the control of a bunch of psychopaths. So nothing good could come out of this. So I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Bye.